Thanks, Holly. You're welcome. Okay, guys. So I don't know what that was all about, but here, let me get everybody muted out but me. Okay, perfect. Um, but yeah, we're recording. So first of all, I just want to congratulate you guys on the best month ever. Like, <laughs> it was insane. Um, just watching everybody, so many people reclaim their ranks. We had so many new 25Ks. Just a lot of people that kind of felt stuck at a place, they're, they're kind of pushing past that. So, um, I, and honestly, you guys, I know we haven't seen anything yet. Like, it, what we just experienced in, in um, March is not going to be anything compared to what's going to happen this month. And then, especially once conference lets out. Those of you guys that haven't been here, um, I've actually been able to experience one full year here, a little over that. So I know what summers look like here. And I can tell you my busiest months, months ever in network marketing have been in Lavelle in the months of July and August. So, you know, I think what Lavelle is so good at doing is their genius. The way that they structure everything that they do and the timing that they do it in, it, it just, it's incredible because we all know that, you know, once January hits, most network marketing companies, especially health and wellness, are busy. January, February, March, it's a given because obviously people have New Year's resolutions. It's just that time of year and tax returns and all the reasons why, you know, that's kind of a busy season. But most companies hold their conferences in January and, you know, then the momentum's gone by March. So what I love that Lavelle does is their moment, they kind of start that momentum by having their conference in April or May, like at the end of April, beginning of May, which just drives us through the summer. That's when they make some cool announcements and come out with a new product. And, you know, I just think that you guys better be ready um, because it, this is going to be the time for you guys to either do it or don't, you know, it's going to be one of those things where you're going to get to, you know, December and you're going to be sitting there going, why did I let this year pass me by. Look at what all of these people have accomplished and I haven't done anything. And it's going to be up to you because sky is the limit over here. Like that's what I love about this opportunity. It feels so good. I was stuck in something the last three years that I was with my last company. I never felt good about it. I, I was, you know, gosh, I was starting to doubt can people get to where I am? Gosh, why can't I get anybody to where I am? And being with Lavelle, it is so refreshing and exciting that I literally have that fire and I'm all pumped up and because I can look in people's faces again and I can like literally believe it when I say to them, you can go as, as far as you want to go with this business. Sky is truly the limit if you dig in. And so I guess what I would want you guys to ask yourself today is if March wasn't a good month for you, if you're not seeing growth in your business, why? And then the second question I would probably ask you is, have you looked in the mirror? Are you doing what you need to be doing? Because I can tell you the leaders on this team that are doing what they need to be doing, they're growing. Um, and so it starts with you. You know, I think I probably say this about every leadership call that I do. It starts with you, but it's the truth. If it's to be, it's up to me. And, you know, look, we've got 12 K's on this leadership call at 12 K. It is not out of the norm or unreasonable. If you only have one or two workers under you, that's pretty normal for a 12 K 12 K isn't this safety spot to go up. Oh, I've, I've arrived. 12 K is that place where it's, you either push past and keep going and keep moving, whether you got to do it yourself or not until you run into more runners. The same people that get you to 40K and 80K are probably not going to be the same ones that got you to 12K, period. Um, the same people that got me to 200K my first month in the business, some of those people aren't even here anymore. So I want you guys to always be thinking that if it's to be, it's up to me. And I need to keep going and push forward and, and, you know, run to 40 K by myself if I have to, you know, that's the mentality you have to have when you're in this kind of industry. And what you're going to find is along the way, you're going to find those right people as you're pushing past there. And as you're, you know, as you're being that lead by example, you're going to run into those people that jump in with you. We had so many promotions on, and I kind of want to take this time right here to highlight our newest 200 K on the team, Sonia. Um, Sonia is uh, actually driving in a car right now on her way back to where you go. You're coming from where to where? <laughs> um, I was in cold and snowy Michigan back to where I live in southern Wisconsin. So it's a snowy mess outside right now. So I'm not coming from a beach by any means like most people are. 
<laughs> right. Well, first of all, congratulations. Like I haven't actually physically told you that. Thank like, you. Um, and you know, it's so cool because you have, I want you to kind of share a little bit with everybody on the call, just a little bit about, we were in our last company together and what's the highest rank you achieved in that company? Um, double diamond along with, you know, my spouse at the time, um, both of us were double diamonds in the company. Um, and it took a whole lot of blood, sweat and tears to get both of those promotions. Um, and how long did it take? Like, how long were you with that company? A year and a half before I got to Double Diamond, I believe. I almost can't remember now because I don't think about that anymore. Well, um, but guess what? <laughs> We've only been here a year and a half, and you're 200K, sister. I know. It's, and, you know, that's where it starts. It really started with me believing in a company like this and seeing the vision. Um, but, you know, most importantly, my team. My team is awesome. The vision that we have, the cultivated relationships that we've built together, um, has definitely made this all happen. You know, you don't get to 200 K alone. You don't get to VIP 800 alone. You don't thrive for free alone. So, you know, having that unity is huge. Um, we have an incredible team of women and people who are great friends in this business and, you know, just putting their success first every single day. Um, since I joined, you know, there hasn't been a week that passed since I joined Laval and Thrive that, I haven't been sending out samples, you know, some of those people still haven't opened those samples or even responded back to me, but that, you know, obviously, as we know, we can't ever let that stop you. Um, so consistent, consistent, consistent. This has been, you know, kind of years in the making to reach something like this when you truly believe it. And, you know, I didn't believe that I was worth anything more, you know, in many ways. And, you know, all the women and people and you, Lisa, and, uh, you know, everyone just makes you believe that all of this is possible, but to celebrate everybody else's success is crazy. I honestly, you guys, I did not have 200 K in my sites in March because I, March 1st, we all know March was a huge month, but on March 1st, I had all of my 12 K's lined up everyone on and at the end of February and February 28th, I put everybody into like this message thread that was halfway to 12 K. And I was like, all right, guys, you guys are going 12 K. These are the incentives I'm putting out for you. Are you guys ready? Who's serious about this? Cause I'm running with you guys all month long. It wasn't until like the auto ships ran Lisa on the 25th that I was like, Whoa, I'm 10 K away from 200 K because I spent all month long, teaching the foundation, going live, helping people thrive for free and digging into my VIP 800 reports and helping the people that wanted to get to 4k and 12k. And we popped so many in an uncountable amount of promotions in Canada and the US um, on my team, because that's what I focused on. And that naturally brought me the highest volume and got me to 200k. So Yes, I want to be 200K, but I more importantly wanted them to be 12K and 4K and VIP 800 and 1600 and thriving for free. Um, as everybody that, people that do know me, I keep it super simple. Um, I don't like complications and I focus a lot on thriving for free and going live with my brand new promoters that are complete strangers just to go live on their pages to share their Thrive experience and teach that over and over and over to them so then they can go on building their business of well how did I start who reached out to me and kind of instilling that belief in people so that's what I did all through March is just focused on them and it naturally brought me to this place at the end of March so it's pretty exciting <laughs> yeah you know it's super exciting I was just thinking about this the other day because I was looking at a lot of our organizations and mm -hmm. It is crazy to me how like, it's hard not to compare when you're with another company for six years, but I compared like, oh my gosh, how crazy it is that somebody can get to 200K with a bunch of 4Ks and 12Ks. Like it's all about the volume coming in. It's not about, you know, having to find five crazy rock stars. You can have, yep. a, team, you can have a team full of just four and 12Ks and go all the way to 200K with that. Like how like how crazy awesome yeah. is that? And well, and the nice thing is it's like you're celebrating so many other people's promotions. I, we couldn't keep up at the end of the month, the last, you know, nine days, 10 days. We had people promoting to 4K on the 18th, the 19th, the 20th, the 21st. And it was constant shout outs because we worked so hard, you know, come starting at March on March 1st with that. And it just, it was, it's such a natural growth over here. And it's just like, you know, the timing is like, perfect storm timing because the volume is so incredible and 
yeah, that was just a whirlwind. Like the whole month of March was just, you know, our team didn't sleep. I mean, really with the time differences on my team, we'd be up all night laughing over messaging. I'm like, have you slept? Nope. Did you sleep? Nope. <laughs> but to make, you know, like we had how many new 25 K's on my team, Judy and Ray Fisher and De Denise Lemoyne and Stephanie Francis, and then numerous 4Ks and so many new VIP 800s, which are, you know, their goal right now is 4K. So I'm really just focusing on that over and over again. So I keep it simple. Everybody knows that I don't complicate anything. I am not green by any means. <laughs> Jack LeBabler is my green and Sandra Sheldon. I go to them for all my questions and they're my itinerary, but that's what I focus on you guys is thriving for free. Don't be afraid. I saw a post somewhere in one of our team pages of, are you afraid to reach out to your downline? I reach out to complete strangers every single day in our business because I want to hear their thrive experience story. And they're like, yes, I have this incredible story. And I'm like, Hey, do you want to go live with me on your page for two to three minutes? That's going to attract the crowds. That's how you're going to get many experiences out there. Like, I'm so nervous, but I'm like, well, you have such a great story to share. We just got to hop on. I'll do most of the talking. It's go out live for three to four minutes. And those Facebook lives, you guys have changed my business. We've been consistent. You know, with my upline, Heather, who's also a 200K, we started Facebook live events. I don't know when, Lisa, was that like last spring? Right. Um, yeah, it's been a year at least. At least a year. And I don't think there's been more than a week that we missed that we haven't done them as a team. Um, you know, sometimes you have 200 people live. 200 live viewers. Sometimes you have 27, but when you look at them as the days progress, like you're getting two to 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 views on those. That has helped our team as a whole huge. And when Lisa does them and you host them, our entire team gets on and we've taught them to take advantage of that, not only for new promoters, but to grow your business um, and be really personal in those messages. So Facebook lives have definitely helped us. Um, and then when Lisa puts out her incentives, our team is kind of trained and know like Lisa's doing what we really have to get on this one. She's super generous, you know, so just consistent efforts every single day being excited. Unite unity is really a big deal to me. I'm sure Lisa knows that I love when I love everyone in my business. I love learning from sidelines, uplines, downlines. I'm learning from every single person every day. Um, so separation is not good for your business. Um, uniting your team with other teams. Um, you know, I know my Canadian team has learned so much from Stephanie Grossick. I, everybody loves that woman. And we're all together. Even my team is with her team and they all know her and they're being inspired by her and they're promoting because of watching her team. So bring that, I you know, unite your teams. Leverage. Like your team is so good at that. You guys leverage each other's strengths and it doesn't matter if it's a sideline, who it is. That's what was so special about our team and it works too is, you know, we, everybody leveraged each other. Nobody cared of whose team you were on. It was, let me help you. And that's where you get places. Well, you taught us that though, Lisa, like you taught us that years ago of, of keeping those windows open. And when you see, you know, other people have complimented us like, wow, you guys are like, you run your business with so much integrity and you guys want to help everyone. I'm like, Lisa taught us that <laughs> years ago, you know? So that's true. And it's been passed along throughout the years from you and just the way that you lead. Um, so it's it, it all kind of stemmed for you and you taught us because we were new to network marketing. We didn't know better. We didn't know what, what was right or wrong. Or, right? <laughs> <laughs> I just read a lot of books and followed my gut. But yeah. I, you know, what's so cool is that it's just to watch the whole progression. So I have a quick question. What you, okay. So you didn't just go to 200 K in a day. It no. a year and a half. I want you to be completely honest right now. Okay. Have you ever felt stuck in Lavelle? Like, man, am I ever going to grow? Am I ever going to get past this level? Um, no, I didn't No. Because no, because of the VA, because of thriving for free and VIP 800. I mean, I knew it was going to take time to grow a team and I knew it was going to take time to be, show people what consistency means of growing their business and just putting a whole lot of belief in them. And I knew in time it was going to happen. I didn't have a timeline and I've learned to have the mentality. And I, you know, I share this with my team a lot too, like, you guys are ending this month or you have to look at how far you are right now on the 3rd of April versus when you first came in two months ago, how far you've came instead of how far you have yet to go. 
Um, you know, it's just about mindset in that way. Before in my other company, yes, Lisa, of course, but this is a whole different momentum, a whole different excitement. I'm different as a person. You know, I've had a lot of personal growth through these times too. So I know that I can't give up. It's my bread and butter. Um, it's what I love to do. And it's for my daughter ultimately. So I nev have never felt stuck in Lavelle. Um, you can't make people try samples. You can't, you know, when right. you ask them. Um, but you will find the right people. It's about adding. It's about adding your, you know, growing your network, having people take you on Facebook, growing that natural growth because, you know, strangers ultimately support and strangers are the ones that have supported my business more so than anybody anywhere on my social media that I even know. So, so yeah, before I did Lisa, I've never really felt stuck in this because I knew it was going to happen. It's just a matter of time and growth. Um, and right. With growth comes consistency and you have to be consistent and you can't, can't be negative, you know, cause it will happen. Right. I love that. And, you know, I was thinking too about in it works, like I always had to work with like the higher up people because that's who was growing your, you know, and if, if I place something, it always had to go under the higher up person. What I love over here is that we can we can we can work with our workers, whether they're just somebody that is hanging out at 4K, you know, but they're slowly putting people in. I mean, every person matters over here. Every single yep. person matters to your business. And everybody mattered to me over there. I didn't care where you were at. But here yep. it's kind of but here it's kind of cool that everyone matters and it goes towards your income. You know what I mean? Like yep. it's like the best of both worlds. So Oh, yeah, even shouting out the thriving for free, that makes such a huge difference for people. Um, right. They're so pumped up. You know, it's like that's the first, very first stepping stone in the business. Let's get you thriving for free. It's an attainable goal. Think about if you got 10 people on your team, if you just worked with them thriving for free, think about the volume that br that brings in. So I right. keep it, you know, at that level. And then the VIP 800, 1600 reports. And then building them, you, you teach them it. that, they go and teach their people that layered leadership. I've learned a lot about of creating that on our team. And we have incredible leaders on our team um, with all different, you know, ideas all the time. And everyone's really good about going live and sharing. And, you know, everyone from Shannon Summers to Sandra to, you know, and we're sidelined to people. But in, you know, my eyes, we're all one big team. So that's pretty cool. I love that. Better yeah. together. And Holly and Elizabeth are so awesome. Like I'm not on their team. They've been such a huge support to me. I love those ladies. You know, other people inspire you outside of your team. And really those ladies are pretty awesome. You know, when they FaceTime you and we're in tears on FaceTime because you just grow to love these people so much, you know, right. on, on your team that you brought in essentially that have impacted my business so well. So yeah, that's, that's so pretty awesome. exciting. Yeah. I'm excited. Well, I'm so all I can team. tell you is I am super happy for you. I mean, well, thank you. you. That means a lot. You deserve it. And it's like not just this last year and a half. It's, you know, three and a half, four years of doing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, it's time, you know, you've deserved this and it's awesome to see it happen. And it's always awesome to watch somebody who was a, you know, diamond or a double diamond get to 200K because it's like, right? that's what's possible. That it, it's not about... Gosh, if you put the work in over here, you're going to get there, period. Exactly. And that's what everybody needs to know on this call. So uh, thanks for sharing. I got yeah, some Yeah, thank you. Stephanie Grassick's going to be our next turner K. She ended the month at like 140, so. Oh, she's, she's getting there. Oh, yeah, she's getting there. Oh, we're so excited. I can't wait. That's I just so can't wait to go to New Orleans and see everyone. And, you know, there's so much to celebrate and just all be together. We always have a blast when we're I know, I together, can't. right? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wait. Yeah. Well, thank well, you thank for having you. me on. I You're appreciate welcome. It. Yeah, um, no problem. You know, and you guys, there's so many people this month that there's a lot of you guys like that are headed towards that 80K and 200K. Oh, it's so exciting because, you know, for that was on my dream board for six years to get somebody else to the top of the compensation plan with me. And to already have 12 people on our team at the top of the compensation plan in 17 months, it blows my mind. I mean, it just, it, I feel like this beaming light. I feel like a sun right now. I'm a dork, but I do because I'm so excited about what's happening. And to think it's only the beginning, 17 months. Can you imagine where we're going to be in 24 months and 36? Like, it's just going to be insane. We are going to be like 
Maria Dillard's team. Like we're going to have so many people on this team that are 200 Ks. It's not even funny. And so many auto bonus centers. And I want you guys to remember that. I think we lose sight of that because a lot of us came from a place of money. We were making money before we know what's out there. We know what's what we're capable of. So when we get into Lavelle, we're like, I need 200 K and that's where I'm going. And we kind of miss out on where we are and don't appreciate it. If we don't feel like we're going fast enough or if we feel like, you know, we're stuck at a place, we're like, we're ungrateful in my opinion. And you know, what I think we need to think about is, wow, look at, you know, most people that get into network marketing, they're not getting in it to go 200 K they're getting in it to go four or 12 K. That's what you need to think about is who are the people on your team that are making a couple hundred dollars or more a month. That's life changing to people. That's what I got in to network marketing for. I had no idea that this was going to happen. And I think that once you get there and you know, it's possible, we get hard on ourselves. You know, we're like, why weren't we here? We should be here. Why is so-and-so moving faster than me? Or this is, you know, just appreciate where you are. I love I, I, I was shocked when I said, you know, tell me the truth, Sonia. Have you ever felt like stuck? I felt stuck before here. I mean, I feel stuck all the time in places and in different places, but I love what she said. No, I've always known it was going to happen. It's just time. And it's just working with the right people. And if everybody had that attitude of gratitude, and if everybody had that viewpoint, I think you would start being so grateful for what you have and where you're at and this opportunity. And like I told all of you guys, I would rather be with Lavelle and move slow, knowing that I was working towards true long-term residual income than work with any other company for short-term success, for short-term money. You know, fast cash is great, but what about long-term? I want to be building something for my family's future. And that's what you guys are doing here. So with that said, I also want to give a couple other shout outs and I want to give anybody else on the call a chance. If there's somebody on your team that you just want to shout out, like do that today. I want to hear it because we need to appreciate the people on this team. This is why we are where we are. Um, I can tell you that some things I saw, I mean, uh, Jamie Pekka. Jamie just went, uh, hit over a million dollars in sales. And I, you know, not even that I didn't even hit like 1.5. I don't even know if she's on, but, um, that's crazy. Like <laughs> I never saw a million dollars in sales in my last company in six years. So to already have somebody hit that point is insane. Um, Giselle is a brand new promoter that, uh, Jamie signed and oh my gosh, this girl, I think just went 40 K is about to go 80 K in like three weeks of signing. Um, so there's crazy stuff going on. Jamie's probably going to be the second. I think twin already got, uh, one of the re-rank bonuses. Jamie should be the second person to get a re-rank bonus on this team. It's craziness. So, uh, um, Megan Baker, that was crazy. Her team like came together the last two days of the month and pulled in more volume than most people pull in in a whole 30 days. Um, and I love the way she kind of pulled everybody together and she charted it all, her and her charts. <laughs> I can't get her away from them. But, you know, wait, old habits die hard. But if they work, they work. And it was crazy how everybody came together with that momentum. And um, it was just fun to see. So there's so many people. And, you know, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Cassandra. Cassandra Turner is freaking awesome. That girl is a beam of light. Her Facebook is amazing. She's so grateful for this opportunity and where she's at. And she works so hard. And I know 25K is going to be hers this month. I can feel it in my bones. Um, and then Stephanie Grachuk. I just have to give her a little shout out personally for me because I have so many people that message me going, can you tell me what Stephanie does? I want to be like Stephanie. Um, so she makes such an impact on people. Always so positive. I don't even think I've ever heard anything negative come from Stephanie's mouth. It's pretty amazing. So, um, and she's just a total like rock star period. Like I don't even know how to describe Stephanie. She's a total rock star on fire. And I have a feeling she's going to go 200 K this month. And then, um, Kristen Martin, I think she'll be a 200 K this month too. So We've got a lot of cool people popping and I don't know if we've got, I do have some self development I want to do with you guys, but before we do that, I would love to take a couple minutes and is there anybody you guys want to unmute yourself and just shout anybody out and why? Nobody.
Hey, Lisa. Hey. I think for me, I mean, we're we're slowly starting out. We ended the month with um sixteen six one six, and I Yay. think it's our full our third full month. But my girl Natasha, she is an absolute rock star, and um her little girl Jen, they are kicking butt. I'm predicting that um, Natasha will go twelve k to eighteen k this month. Wow, that's awesome. That's killer. That was my shout out. <laughs> Yay. I love it. Thank hey, you. Lisa, it's Elizabeth. I couldn't get to my microphone fast enough. I was across the room. First of all, I want to recognize Holly Leisure. She is an incredible servant leader. She is always there to help, just like she was this morning. I mean, she is constantly, right. constantly, constantly Amen. helping people with recording. She's also an amazing inspiration to people. And I am so blessed that she and I have been on this journey together. I mean, we've, been, we've known each other for 30 years but she's just an amazing person, an amazing leader. And some of you um, don't even know how these things happen behind the scenes. And Holly's one of those people that leads from the front, but also supports from the back. And that's an amazing gift to have. So I want to give recognition to her. And then I've got um, two other leaders that are continually, persistently growing. They both had great growth this week or this, you know, this past the end of the, the month. But consistent is Heather Williams and also Laura Book, just consistently growing. And, you know, sometimes when people come in, they get that stuck. But it's sometimes it's the baby steps with their team that make that strong foundation that they don't move backwards. They're always moving forward. And so right. I appreciate them both for consistently being who they are and doing the right things and knowing that getting people on Thrive is the key to the best foundation built. You know, it, it just is. Helping people thrive, not just selling a kit, helping people thrive is the best way to build long-term. I love it. Hey, Lisa, it's Amanda. Hey, Amanda. Hey, I had to put my headset in because my husband's loading the dishwasher and it sounded like a crazy house in here. Um, but I wanted to shout out my team. Like, you know, there's not been a month that goes by that they're not pushing all the way to the end. They're not re-figuring out like where their team is, whether it's VIP 800s, VIP 1600, 800, 1600s, um, a new 4k, a new 12k, 25k, 40k, 80k. It doesn't matter. Like there were people that were 16, 17,000 dollars away two days before going into close to 80k. Um, and, and, you know, they came up $4,000 short. There were some people that hit their, their re-rank again this month. Um, but it was all with intention. And, you know, I just have to give a shout out to all my 12K and up leaders, to be honest. Uh, and there's leaders that aren't 12K yet. But specifically, we have a very, very tight group. Um, we work together, we shoot different ideas with each other. And I'm just, I'm really extremely proud of them because without them, uh, our team wouldn't be what it is. And, you know, we had our second highest month um, in March. We did hit over 700 and I think it was 702,000 in sales. And the only month that we beat that was in July of last year, whenever Duo came out. So I just want to give my team a shout out because I know that we have a couple people, three people actually running towards 200 K this month and possibly even four. Um, so Anyways, I'm just going to cheer them on, and I do want to give Stephanie also a shout out for her push group idea, um, because I, you know, she allowed me to join in on it to kind of see what they were doing, and we are doing it together as a team this month, and people are really excited, and they're really goal-focused, and we're just taking it one day at a time, so I love leadership that allows other people in to bounce ideas, and you know, that's how we all become so much stronger. So anyways, that's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to give a shout out to everybody on here that is for my team. I don't want to say names um, because I don't want to miss anybody because I appreciate them all. But yeah, that's all. I love it. Anybody else feel like a shout out? Yeah, um, it's Shannon again. <laughs> you can't recognize my voice. Um, I also wanted to say thank you to um, Steph G because she answers like my messages like instantly and I'm not even on her team and she's always there helping me and 
I, gosh, I can't thank her enough. And um, Leslie, I want to say, you know, give a shout out to Leslie because she was, and she may, she may not want me to share this, but she was stuck. She was feeling stuck and um, she reached out and now she's just kicking butt. Now she's just going and, um, you know, we kind of restarted her and, and I'm super proud of her, super, super proud of her. And um, I know Britt's on this call too, and she never stops. She just goes, 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 goes. And I know that both of you guys are going to be on track for that Leslie 40K this month and Britt 25K this month. And um, I'm super excited for you guys. That is so awesome. Yeah. Woohoo. Anybody else? Don't be shy. Hey, Lisa. Hey, what's up? Not much. This is Katie. I just wanted to give a quick shout out. Um, I actually went 12K last month, the last day of the month, and I wanted to give a shout out to my team because, I mean, we got some serious rock stars. Yeah, we only hit 12K, but I know with the team that I've got, we're all so consistent now and we're all so close. We talk daily and, you know, we're always there for each other. I know for a fact, you know, one of my girls, Justina, she's going to hit 12K this month. I have no doubt about that. So I'm pushing hard for 25K. And then I want to give a shout out to both the Stephanie's, Stephanie Gratchik and Stephanie Francis, because they literally have been there for us, you know, day and night. Anytime we need them, they're there. They're always there to give shout outs and, you know, give constant reassurance. They make us feel like, you know, all of this hard work is paying off. And then, you know, they make us feel like we can do it too. And so do you. I mean, you guys all help out so much, making us feel like it's all possible. Oh, that's awesome. And congratulations. Believe me, I cried all day. <laughs> that is so amazing. But thank you guys again for everything you guys do. Seriously, you guys are awesome. Anybody else have anything they want to shout out? Hey, Lisa, it's Tracy. Hey, Tracy. Hey. Um, I just want to shout out two girls on my team this month too. They both went for me, Tracy Payton and Amanda He. And our tiny team over here went from 12K last month to over 18 a month. So we went up by 50%. It was, it was amazing. The teamwork that we had was just phenomenal. And I'm, I'm absolutely blown away at the jump in one month. So just a quick shout out to them. And I want to give you a shout out for, you know, I know sometimes it's hard international with the time differences, but you always make sure that you are on this call. You are always making sure that you're plugging in and you have never given up. You're steady. You stay the course. You're always so positive. You're, you're amazing. I love you, Tracy. Oh, you make me well up. Don't do that. <laughs> no, Thank no. you. Thank you. Hey, Lisa. Hey. It's Amanda again. And I just want to give Tracy a shout out, okay, because she's given everybody else shout outs. And I know that Talissa already gave her one. But, you know, Tracy's going to be coming to conference. She's going to be coming to San Diego. I mean, she right. is traveling. She went to Mexico. I'll buy her lonesome, like by herself. And that is just absolutely incredible because I, I don't think a lot of people realize, like, first of all, that's a massive amount of travel. That's a, you know, it's, it's not cheap for her to do that internationally, but to come by herself becomes so determined that she needs this and that's what she needs to make happen. And I just, I want her to know that I'm super proud of her and honored to be on this team with her. And I can't wait to see her in, in New Orleans. <laughs> Anyways, I just, I, I, I want her to know, like, you know, Tracy, I want you to know, like, how incredible you truly are. So, anyways, I just want to say that. Yeah, and me, and speaking of uh, Tracy, you mentioned Talissa. Talissa, congratulations, girl, I'm 40 gay. Any last shout outs before I start with some, a little self-development this week? Hi, Lisa. It's Sarah. I want to shout out real quick before the baby starts screaming. Um, first of all, I'm just really excited. Um, I want to shout out to Amanda, who 
I mean, she knew I was going for 25 K and every day she would message me there towards the end. Here's where you are. I'm so excited for you. I mean, she knew how much I was pushing for it. She knew, um, how much it would help us out cause we're moving and we're trying to, um, get our house on some land and there's a lot of things that we need to do to get it done. And so she knew that how much it would help us to go 25 K and she was just really, um, pushing for me there at the end. So she doesn't know, but that really kept me sane that last week and a half. So just shout out to Amanda for that. Yeah. Amanda rocks true that. Okay. Last call for shout outs. I'm pretty Hi, Lisa. Good. It's Carly DeRay. Hey, Carly DeRay. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Um, so I just wanted to do a couple of shout outs as well. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to Ray Fisher. This month I went 12 K essentially, um, without a team underneath me, just basically from the guidance from Ray and definitely from Sonia. I work super close with Sonia, um, as well as Kayla Rose Oliver. All three of those girls are super amazing, super consistent. Um, they're always there 24 seven for their teams. And I definitely wanted to shout out Kayla as well. She's super pregnant and she's sick every day, but she shows up and um, she's still there for us. So I just wanted to shout out those ladies real quick. Yes, yeah, she is super pregnant and she's super awesome. Yeah, I agree. Um, and congrats to you and you know, don't slow down. Just keep going. Doesn't matter whether you got anybody under you working or not, girl. You got there, you just keep going and you'll find those, you'll find runners. You'll find somebody to, that jumps in right alongside you. No, exactly. I just found something um, really nice the other day talking about, you know, 50% of the business is luck, but 50% of the business is meeting that luck with hard work. Amen. So Amen. I always say this I'm is all about luck. for the luck part. <laughs> right. You know what? I say that all the time. This whole business is about luck, but you can't get lucky. If you ain't out there looking, you know, you have, you have exactly. can't get lucky without the work, putting in the work. Anybody else? Last call. And I know we could probably be on all day shouting everybody out, but so, you know, I need to get a little bit of self-development in and y'all, I am stoked. Okay. You guys, <laughs> I get very, very excited when I find a book that just rocks my world and I have found a new book that has rocked my world. I know I say this every week, but this book that I'm going to be taking our self-development out of this week is, and this is going to get us into our paychecks. Um, <laughs> I'll try to fit it in. I think I'll probably go over the hour today, but this is going to be good info. So you're probably going to want to get a pen and a piece of paper. Um, but this book is of course, John Maxwell. I use him a lot. Um, and this book is called good leaders ask great questions your foundation for successful leadership. And y'all are leaders. You know, you all are, whether you got one person under you, you're a leader. But I think once you hit that 12K mark, that is when you really need to start taking ownership of your leadership. That's when you need to start kind of building upon your leadership and, and really start concentrating on some areas, you know, to make you better. Because at the end of the day, you cannot get to 200K without effective leadership. I don't care who you are. Look, I know some people. That, a, that in my last company that went Ambassador Diamond, and I know some people that are 200Ks that don't lead very well, because like we just talked about, you can get lucky. You absolutely can get lucky and sign the right people under you that take you all the way to 200K. Here's my thing though. Being in such a position where you can impact so many people, where so many people can look up to you, or so many people you can inspire with your vision and your purpose, why waste that? Why would anyone want to get to 200K and sit back and not affect and, and help more people get to where they are? But there are people that, that do, you know, but what a waste. I always think what a waste of, you know, talent, position, sharing you with other people so that they can get to where you are and, and teaching and learning and growing. So I hope all of you find a passion for growing and becoming a better leader like I have. And I mean, it's one of the staples of my day. You know, I'm always looking for better ways to be a better leader. And 
by far. <laughs> I've come a long way, but I can tell you it is always learning and growing and I still have horrible bad habits and things I'm always trying to improve on. But at the end of the day, I know I wouldn't be half the leader I am today if I wouldn't have, you know, taken ownership of it. So I hope some of you guys do that too. And this book is amazing and I'm going to be reading out of it today and talking about it a little bit, but it's what questions do I ask myself as a leader? And um, basically what you need to ask yourself, if you're a leader, you understand that questions are always going to be a part of a leader's life. The issue becomes who's asking the questions as a leader. I can allow others to ask me the hard and important questions, or I can take responsibility, be proactive, and ask myself those questions. I've come to the realization that by asking myself those tough questions, I can maintain my integrity, increase my energy, and improve my leadership capacity. Since writing out these questions, I ask myself as a leader, I've reviewed and reflected on them hundreds of times. Many of these questions are personal, but I believe they can also help you guys as much as they have helped me. I pass them on to you as a guide with the suggestion that you develop your own list. So the first question you ask yourself as a leader is, am I investing in myself? A question of personal growth. Are you investing in you? The most important investment you and I will ever make in a, is in ourselves, period. That investment will determine the return that you get out of life. Um, Jim Rohn, Jim Rohn's mentor, John Earl Schof, said to him, Jim, if you want to be health, wealthy and happy, learn this lesson well. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Jim did learn that lesson well. As he once pointed out, the book you don't read can't help you. The, sem the seminar you won't attend can't change your life. The business gets better when you get better. Never wish it was easier. Wish you were better. I love that, you guys. We always talk about this. You can't help others until you help yourself first. You can't believe in others until you believe in yourself first. You can't go to 200K until you, you know, get someone else to 200K until you get there first. You can't teach other people to have layered leadership in their business if you're not creating it for yourself. So first is you, you know, you've got to work on you. And are you investing in yourself? Are you taking time out for you? You guys, this is an important question that you need to be asking yourself. You know, are you making sure you're getting your cup filled? You know, are you setting that time aside to talk to your upline, figuring out what can I improve on? What do I need to do better? What do you think we need to do here? Are you taking time to sit down and write yourself out a plan for the month? Do you have your goals set out? Um, do you, are you making sure you're getting to the meetings and the conferences and you're really soaking in what you're learning and taking in? All of these things matter. Are you setting aside time at the beginning of every day and at the end of every day to do some self-development? Um, gratitude, all of those things, exercise, diet, Pour into yourself too, guys. You've got to set that time aside because if you are not filling your cup up, you can't fill other people's cups up. So that's the first thing. Um, the other way you can invest in yourself, your self-image. How do you see yourself? How do you feel about yourself as a person? Are you positive? Are you negative? On a scale of one to 10, what number would you use to describe how you feel about yourself? Take a moment and rate yourself. So on a scale of one to 10, how do you guys feel about yourself? Do you feel like you're a positive person? Do you feel like you're moving in the right direction? Do you feel like you're, um, how your leadership kind of think about that and give yourself a number from one to 10, take a moment and really rate yourself. Whatever number you guys pick to describe your self image also describes your willingness to invest in yourself. For example, if you rated your self image of five, you will be willing to invest in yourself up to a five level, but not more. That's why people with low self images do not make great investments in themselves. It's not what you are that keeps you from investing in yourself. It's what you think you are or you aren't. You will never be able to bet on yourself unless you believe in yourself. Many people find themselves thinking like Snoopy, the beagle in the Peanuts comic strip who thinks yesterday I was a dog, today I'm a dog, tomorrow I'll probably still be a dog, sigh. There's so little hope for advancement. There's, here's the thing, guys. Self-image is something that doesn't happen overnight. And it's funny because when you find these people in your life that they make excuses and on your team, it's a self-image thing. The reason why they're not finding time to purchase the pack, to, you know, get to that meeting, 
they don't, they don't have the self image. You've got to help create that self image for them, but also you need to ask yourself where your self image is, you know, too. So people are not stuck in dead end situations when it comes to their potential. We have the ability to make tremendous advances, but first we have to believe in ourselves. Um, and then your dream, how you see your future. This also is investing in yourself. Um, he says in the book, when I sat down to write, put your dream to the test. My desire was to help people make great strides towards their dreams. What I didn't realize until the book had been written and started speaking about it was that people don't have a dream. I was shocked. My life has been filled with hopes and dreams and aspirations. Because of that, I assumed that everyone had at least one dream. I was wrong. Why does this matter? Because the size of your dream determines the size of your investment. If your dream is large, you will invest in yourself to achieve it. If you have no dream, you will not invest in yourself at all. When you're working with someone new, you guys, this, is, this should teach you a lot, okay? And a lot about yourself because that first question, am I investing in myself? If you wanna get your people on your team invested in this business and invested in themselves, you've gotta help them find that dream. What is that dream? That dream has got to, the, the size of their dream is gonna determine the size of their investment, whether they're gonna be all in. We all know it. You know, it's mostly when somebody is put in a really sticky situation or something profound happens in their life, that seems to be when they go, the light bulb goes off, right? Have you seen it? I've seen it. I, I, and it works over six years. I would see people come into my business, sit there for a year, not do a thing. And then something monumental hits their life. Something just crazy happens. And all of a sudden they wake up and they run. Like, you know, somebody that was sitting there doing nothing all of a sudden has this fire and they go wherever they want to go. And it's simply because the dream, the, the vision, something happened that pushed them. So you've got to help people find that. Um, and you've got to find it within yourself. If you're stuck right now, if you feel stuck, have you reevaluated? Because a lot of people get to a place and they don't go further because they don't think it's possible. They haven't dreamed bigger. Um, they they kind of got comfortable. You've got to ask yourself, is that you? You know, do you need to figure out what is that that thing that's gonna be that's gonna help you invest more? You know, you've got to find something more in you, that that meaning of why this why you need to go where you need to go in this business. Um, and then your friends, how how do others see you? Motivational speaker Joe Larson. Sorry. So I did something about I went out and found some new friends. That may sound harsh, but this is what's needed for anyone who's surrounded by people who don't believe in them. One of my most important growth decisions was to expand my horizons and find other people whose passions to grow themselves and help others were similar to mine. And at that time, I was only 33 years old and I left everything familiar and everything I knew. That decision took courage, it took change. However, if I had stayed where I was, I would never be grown to the level that I'm at now. People need others to help them stay inspired and growing. Here's the deal, guys. If you don't find something, um, you've got to help your people see and you, you know, ask yourself that. If you're stuck right now, are you in a negative environment? Are you surrounding yourself with the right people? Or are you getting on the phone with other people and, and complaining together. My business isn't growing. Well, mine isn't either. Man, this sucks. Or I've been stuck here. Me too. Who are you talking to? Who are you surrounding yourself with? What are the words coming out of your mouth? You need to change scenery. You know, we all know, you know, it could be somebody in our lives. And then you need to look at your team. This is all about you and your team. If you've got that person on your team that just seems to be in a weird place, you need to ask, what is home life like? What about your friends? Are people supporting you? And then you've got to learn how to pull that support and that belief into their life by surrounding themselves with the people that they need to be surrounded with, you know, pulling in other leaders or other inspirational people. Give them an accountability partner. Find somebody on your team that you believe could, could inspire them and get them excited and pull them in as an accountability partner. Like, that's huge. Um, so, yeah. See how other people see you, you know, find out how other people see you. Um, so the second thing, the second question you can ask yourself is, am I genuinely interested in others? Someone once said people have two reasons for doing anything, a good reason and the real reason. For you to be a good leader when dealing with people, the good reason must be the same as the real reason. Your motives matter. If you're a leader 
or want to become one, you need to ask yourself why. There's a big difference between people who want to lead because they're genuinely interested in others and they desire to help people. And then people who are in it to help only themselves. People lead for selfish reasons. They seek power. They love control and want to continue to add value to themselves by reducing the value of others. Position, titles are their ego food. They continually make others feel their authority and know their rights as a leader. Money, they will use people and sell themselves for financial gain or prestige. Their looking good is more important to them than, their being, than, them, than them being actually good or doing good. It's easy for a leader to lose focus. That's why I need to check my motives daily. I never want to put my leadership ahead of the people I lead. Naturally, gifted leaders have capability, capabilities that can easily use for personal advantage. They see things before others do, and they often see more than others see. As a result, they enjoy the advantage of having good timing and seeing the big picture. That puts them in a position to make the most of opportunities. If I can see something before you do, I can get started before you, and then often I guarantee, guarantees I can win. If I see more than you see, my decisions will likely be better than yours, right? So the question is not, does the leader have an advantage over others? The answer to the question is yes. The question is, will the leader use that advantage for personal gain or for the benefit of everyone on the team? That is why I need to ask myself whether I'm genuinely interested in others. It keeps my natural selfishness in check and, and purifies my, mo my motives. Leaders are always in danger of abusing their power. That is why when I address leaders at the United Nations, I spoke in the subject three questions people ask of their leader. The questions are, can you help me? Do you care for me? Can I trust you? Note that two of the questions deal with leaders' motives. If followers are concerned about the motivation of a leader, the leaders themselves should be too. Let me say one more thing about this subject. Questioning your motives is not the same as questioning your character. If you have poor character, your motives will probably be bad. But if you have solid character, you can still fall prey to bad motives. Motives are usually attached to the specific situations or actions. Character is based on values. If you have wrong motives in a particular situation, but your values are good and your character is strong, you'll probably detect where you're going wrong and have a chance to correct it. This is the reason we've been teaching values to leaders through um, my nonprofit organization, Equip. When leaders learn and live good values, they make themselves more valuable and lift the value of other people. This is the foundation of positive leadership. Okay, I wanna talk about this for one second. Am I genuinely interested in others or is it all about me? You guys, over the last almost eight years, I have been faced many times with decisions where I could have absolutely done things to benefit me over someone else. Many times. I, I, I know y'all can feel me on this one. How many times would it have been easy for you to be the enroller of someone? You knew you were going to do all the work. You knew that the person probably would never even work out in the business that you were going to take the person from. And you thought, well, if I'm going to do the work anyways, and this person probably isn't even going to be here in a month, who cares if I'm the enroller? Those little decisions matter. Those little decisions speak to your integrity. You know that's not right. And it's so easy to justify it. It's easy to justify those kind of decisions. You are going to be faced over the next 10, 15 years in your career, 20 years, forever, as long as you're in this industry, you're going to be faced with these little tests all the time where you can do the right thing. And, and you know what? A lot of these things, no one would ever know but you. But I promise you, if you are making decisions, always, always benefiting you, or even sometimes, or even if you think no one will find out, I promise you, you will never go anywhere. It will come back to haunt you. It will be found out somehow. And even if it never is, you'll know. And I can tell you, <laughs> I have watched leaders on my team lose respect, dignity. Um, it's crazy. You guys, when I left It Works, it was crazy to me how people would leave and no one followed them. They were like, I'm not going to go with that person again. What you do now, we live a long knife. Who knows if Lavelle is going to be here in 20 years? I don't know. We we, we never know anything. I thought I was going to be it with it works forever. But I do know one thing. We live a long life and I want to be good to people because 
I don't know when I'm going to interact with them again. I don't know where life's going to take us. And I all want to be that person that they go, I can trust her. I want to be that person that they go, I know, I know I could put my life in her hands and she would choose the right decision, you know, and you guys, you ruin that and it's over. I promise you, once you lose trust with someone, once you start making decisions that benefit you over them, it's so easy in times of like bonuses, you know, up. I'm going to direct this person to do something because I need to get here. It's going to benefit my paycheck. Yeah. Short term, that can look all great and dandy, but long term, you could possibly be losing someone in a year that it's going to get a bad taste in their mouth because it was all done the wrong way. You've got to think about these things. It's so important and it should be on the top of your priority list. And sometimes I get it. I know it can be so easy and it can seem so simple, but it's not. So I hope that out of anything you guys hear today, you hear that. I think it's important to know. Um, so the third question you should ask yourself is, am I, a ground, am, am I grounded as a leader? Just as leaders are vulnerable to acting for their personal advantage, they are also susceptible to having overblown senses of their own importance. That's why they need to remain grounded. What do I mean by that? Good leaders need to exhibit three important qualities. The first quality is humility. Understanding your place in the light of the bigger picture. Um, leaders can start to think that everything is all about them, especially when their team or organization is winning. The greater the accomplishment, the greater they need to check their egos. That's why it's so important that they remain grounded. The most important quality of a well-grounded person is humility. Um, humility is not denying your strengths. Humil humility is being honest about your weaknesses. All of us are a bundle of both great strengths and great weaknesses, and humil humil humility is being able to be honest about both. My belief is that humility is a choice every day to give credit to God for our blessings and to other people for our successes. Humble leaders are comfortable with who they are and feel no need to draw attention to themselves. They, they revel in the accomplishments of others, empower others to excel and allow others to shine. That doesn't mean that, that a leader needs, blend, needs to blend into the woodwork either. It just means that having the right perspective is important. Leadership author Patrick uh, Lenoncia says that good leaders can motivate others and be humble at the same time. He writes, I have defined humility as the realization that a leader is inherently no better than the people he or she leads, and charisma as the realization that the leader's actions are more important than those of the people he or she leads. As leaders, we must strive to embrace humility and charisma. You guys, I'm sorry, but you're not where you are because of you. Not all because of you. You're where you are because you signed some good people. You got lucky because you got out there and did the work and you found some good people that saw the vision like you did and they, why you are where you are. Make no mistake about it. Every day when I wake up in the morning, I thank God for each and every person on this team because I know I'm not here by myself. I definitely know I couldn't have done it without any of you. And I know each person on this team plays a part. Uh, in fact, some days I feel sad and I know that sounds crazy, but I go, I see some people on my team working so hard, some working harder than me some days. And, and it, it makes me feel guilty that I got in at the right time and have these amazing people that have joined me. I could have just been, it, it could just as easily have been that I got in and didn't find the right people, but did all the hard work. I have people on this team, you guys, that work so hard and it drives me nuts to watch people that truly deserve it while people get to these ranks of 80Ks and 200Ks and then sit on their ass. Like I want to throw up in my mouth when I think about who deserves it and who has it. If you are going to get to that place of 200K and 80K, don't sit on your ass, deserve it. Appreciate people. Be thankful every day. Like know that, that you aren't there because of you. You're there because of a bunch of other people too. And that you need to understand that they need to be appreciated. I mean, that is so important. So yes, are you grounded? Because if you ain't grounded, you weren't going too far as a leader, I can tell you that. Um, I read a story about a leader who um, exemplifies charismatic humility. Um, for seven years, the CEO of Burberry, a luxury fashion headquarter in London, um, she was leading the company. She transferred its brand increased its global reputation and more than tripled its annual sales and, and its value. Um, she's a known innovator, but she also is known for being the kind of leader who promotes collaboration, fosters team spirit, and builds trust. The key, she says, it's 
compassion. It's humility. It's saying thank you. Say thank you. Appreciate people. Um, and be authentic. Be comfortable in your own skin. Successful leaders are often put on a pedestal by people. To stay real and grounded, leaders need to get off that pedestal and stay with the people. I always used to, people, <laughs> I didn't get really close to any of the leaders and it works. Like the, I didn't really, the other ambassadors, like I was kind of the black sheep. Um, and it's because I didn't sit in VIP. It's because I sat with my team. It's because I didn't kiss their butts or kiss other people's butts. You know, I know who is important. None of those people. And that's what I would say to my team is, why would I go sit in a VIP section with a bunch of people that aren't on my team that could care less about me? Why wouldn't I be sitting with my team, the people that got me to where I am today, that, that are part of this amazing thing that we've created? And it's little things like that. And I'm not saying you have to feel bad for sitting in VIP. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you're going to make choices in your business. Be authentic. Successful people, they're authentic. You know, you find that place where you're appreciating and you're putting your time into where you really need to be putting it. You know, there's two different types of people. There's the type of person that goes to a conference and that's a 200K and says, I want to fill my cup up and I don't want to be bothered with my team. And there's the type of person that says, I'm going to be there for my team. It's all about my team. In fact, I need to fill my team's cup up and meet every person I can when I'm there. You just need to decide which person you want to be. Does it make anybody wrong for being either one? No, it's just who, what makes you feel more comfortable. There's times to fill your cup up. You know, I, I set those times aside. I go to just conferences with me and a couple of my top leaders. I'll set aside a time for that. Or I'll have a spa day just with chastity. Or I figure those things out. But when it comes to big events and things like that, in my opinion, it's all about your team. And that's what it should be about. But again, totally all about whatever y'all want to do. Um, and have a purpose. That's the bigger, that's bigger than you. The third thing that I can keep leaders grounded is their calling. Um, make sure that you have a purpose and know what that purpose is. Um, when I found my why, I found my way. When I found my why, I found my will. When I found my why, I found my wings. I never want to become a leader so full of myself that it becomes unable, unable to fulfill my purpose. Leaders who do that become unstable. That's why I check myself to make sure that I remain grounded. If I, may, if I maintain humility, display authenticity, and remain true to my calling, the chances are good that I'll be able to keep my feet on the ground. And then the fourth question you can ask yourself is, am I adding value to my team? A question of teamwork. I shared with y'all at the beginning of this chapter that John Wooden said to me in one of our mentoring sessions, there is one question I ask myself every day. Every day I ask myself, how can I make my team better? Each of you guys should be asking yourself that every day. Not only did that question inspire me to create my own list of questions to ask myself as a leader, but it's such a good question that it's always made my list. As a leader, I need to figure out what I can do to make my team better and to add value to the players and, the promote, and to promote my teamwork. Here are some suggestions for adding value based on what I learned from um, Coach Wooden every day. I try to do the following. Promote full commitment. Um, create an environment of encouragement and support. Identify adversity as an opportunity to develop character. Teamwork is never tested during good times. You know how good your team is when adversity hits. It introduces you to yourself and reveals who you're strong and who you're, where, who, who's strong, how strong you are, and where your weak people are and, and who's strong on your team. We often don't like that, but the reality is that losses can can be learning experiences if you have the right attitude. Um, God allows us to experience the low points of life in order to teach us lessons so we can learn in, in another way. Um, you guys, I wanna touch the base on this really quick because adversity, when things happen on your team, things like we just, somebody left and went to another company. We've had a couple of that lately. How you react, how you proceed, is how your team is going to learn. And it's also how it's going to keep them together or make it fall apart. Everybody's watching you. Everything you do matters. So if you run into a situation on your team, there's going to be a lot of adversities. There's going to be people that don't get along. There's going to be people that you don't care for. There's going to be people that you would rather not work with. There's going to be times where you're going to have to fix little arguments and pull people together. 
one of the things in chastity will tell you that I taught her this and it works, the 24 hour rule. I always wait 24 hours before I react to any situation because my reaction 24 hours later is never the same. So there's little things like that that you have to hone in on and, and consider. But what you guys have to understand is it's going to be during these times and how you handle them that define you. If you don't know where to go or, you know, gosh, I've never handled this situation before. I don't know what to do. Get with an upline. Ask. Ask around. Get opinions. Go to people that have been there before. But do not react. You sit and you wait 24 hours before you handle any situation. Get all the facts. And because you got one shot. Once you guys lose integrity and, and character with people, it's hard to get back if you ever do get it back. They're waiting for the second foot to drop. They, they, they realize now that, you know, they can't trust you anymore. Or you didn't handle that correctly. And once you put a bad taste in someone's mouth in your business, y'all, it's hard to get that bad taste out. So, you know, you have to think about everything you do as a leader. Everything you do now is 12K and above. It matters. It's the second somebody signs up on your team, guys, they want to be you. That's their goal. You know, they want to be a 12K. You're where they want to be. They already look up to you. It's up to you to keep that, you know, that view that they have of you, that view alive. Live up to what they feel you're going to be. Or you can ruin it, you know, so it matters. Just make sure that you take your time and that you think about things before you do them. Consider each person's strengths and weaknesses. The freedom to do your own thing ends when you have obligations and responsibilities. If you want to fail yourself, you can, but you cannot do your own thing if you have responsibilities to team members. You, I think it's one of our biggest responsibilities as leaders is to help people find their strengths and weaknesses. It's up to you. I've watched it before. I've watched people on my team come in. They're unsure. They're, they're not quite sure. They've never done this before. Totally insecure. And I will point something out about them that they're doing well. And that makes them feel good. And it also is something that they grow and improve upon. Wow, I'm good at that. I'm going to do more of it. It's when you, it's up to you to kind of figure out where those strengths lie on your team utilize those strengths for everybody as a whole. Um, you know, I know who on my team is good at Instagram. I'm going to pull those people in and have them do a call with my team. I know who's great at Facebook. I know who's great at training. I know who's good at Facebook lives. I know who's good at this. And I know people where they're weak too. Like I'm not going to ask someone on my team to do something that it, that's not their strong suit. I'm going to go find the strong suit person. So it's up to you to recognize these things in people, but also point them out because sometimes people just don't know. And so when you can find that one thing in that team member that's, that sets them apart, you, they, you can point that out to them and they can expand on it. You wouldn't believe what it does for their character and helps them grow. It's, it's just an amazing thing to watch. If you're a leader and you're not adding value to your team, you're not, you need to question whether or not you should even be a leader. Adding value to team members and helping them to win, that's what leadership is all about. So I hope you guys ask yourself that question. Um, the fifth question ask yourself is, I'm staying in my strength, am I staying in my strength zone? Period. Are you staying and working in your strengths? I remember when I first got started in network marketing, I thought the, the, <laughs> the key to being a good leader and, and winning in this industry was getting good at what I wasn't good at. I thought, oh, if I just work on all the things that I'm weak at, y'all, yeah, no, uh-uh. You need to find the two or three things that you're strong at and you need to become an expert at those. Don't work on the things that you're not weak at, not during a busy season. Look, I am not an organized person. You know, I, I just never have been. So when I started in this business, I had to start reading some books and, and getting organized and whatever. And I'm better, but you definitely aren't going to pick me to be on your organization call. You definitely don't want me keeping a schedule. I mean, look, I know where my strengths are and I know where my weaknesses are, and I'm not going to try to be somebody I'm not. And I'm also not going to pretend I'm somebody I'm not either, because at the end of the day, that's going to hurt other people. If I'm stepping in roles that I don't belong to be in, that I don't deserve to be in or I shouldn't be there, that's not right. I need to be pulling in those people that should. So, you know, just know where your strengths lie and work in those. And, and yes, get better at those weaknesses, but, but put more into the strengths. It's not about getting better at what you're not good at, period. Um, so stay in your strength zone. And 
The more you focus on your strengths, the better you will be positioned to see and seize opportunities as they arise. Number six is, am I taking care of today? Are you taking care of yourself? Good leaders naturally look to the future. They're known for vision and for leading others to new and higher destinations. However, the future isn't where anything gets accomplished. That happens today. That's why you need to take care of it now. Getting your hands around what you should be doing every day can be difficult. To, to best use my time correctly, there are five areas where I put where I make sure I'm taking care of business. I can do everything. I can't do everything every day, but I can do the most important things every day. Here's what I'm, what's on my list. Your faith, your family, relationships, mission, health. You guys make your list of what's important to you. You know, you'll have a list of this is what has to be done daily. These are my important, uh, you know, no holds bar. I'm going to get them done, non-negotiables. And then, you know, being, I think that's probably one of the hardest things for a lot of you guys is being organized as a leader and on purpose. But it's something you've got to work on for sure. Um, number seven, am I investing my time in the right people? This is huge, you guys. And then I'm going to end the call, but I need you guys to hear this part. This is where a lot of you guys get so stuck in your business because you are putting too much time and too much energy into the wrong people. You're not working in the right places. The greatest legacy any leader can leave is the other, is the other leaders he raises up before he's finished. It's all about creating more leaders. That, that means finding the right people, investing in them, in them in the right times, right? People often ask how to find great leaders. The answer is simple. Know what a great leader looks like. If you have a clear picture of a good leader and you can describe it in words, you know what you're looking for. If you don't already have a list of your own, take a look at mine and see which factors you also desire in the leaders you work with. Number one, the influence factor. Do they influence others? Number two, the capacity factor. Do they have the potential to grow and develop? Number three, the attitude factor. Do they desire to grow and develop themselves? Number four, the chemistry factor. Do we like each other? Number, and that always doesn't matter. You can have good leaders on your team that you don't mesh with, but you need to find a way to work with them. Number five, the passion factor. Are they self-motivated? Number six, the character factor. Are they grounded? Number seven, the values factor. Are our values compatible? Number eight, the teamwork factor. Do they work well with others? Number nine, the support factor. Do they add value to me? The creative factor, can they find possibilities and impossibilities? Number 11, the option factor, can their con contribution give me options? And then number, and then 12, the 10% factor, are they in the top 10% of those on our team? When I first began developing leaders, I was excited about making a difference with people that I was not very, that, that was not very discriminating about whom I invested my time in. To put it bluntly, I recruited everybody, but then I discovered that not everyone desires to grow and, and relatively few people truly want to make a difference. That's a problem because you can't make a difference with people who don't want to make a difference. You can make an equal investment of time, effort, and resources in two different people, and you will get completely different return on each one. When I realized that different people give different ROIs, returns on investment, I began to change the way I approach leading leadership development. I started to think about who I had given good return for my time and who hadn't. And that's when I began to define what a good leader looks like. When the picture becomes clear to me, my investment becomes strategic and my results improve greatly. What's on your list? Take some time to review um, your list. You know, what's your list? What do you want your leaders on your team to look like? There's several questions I ask myself as a leader every day. Um, they help me to be successful by keeping myself growing, checking my motives, maintaining stability, promoting teamwork, leveraging my strengths, focusing on today, and investing in the right people. I hope my list inspires and encourages you to take some time and think about the questions you need to ask yourself every day. Um, Socrates is quoted as saying, the unexamined life is not worth leading. I would add to that unexamined leader is not worth following. Leaders who never take time to ask what they're doing and why they're doing it are unlikely to stay on track. Lead at their best and reach their potential. That is why we need to keep asking ourselves tough questions. So that's it. I loved this chapter, chapter because I feel like it's kind of a beginner's to leaders. We need to ask ourselves questions every day. And those are good questions to ask yourself. Um, and y'all, you're not, I'm pretty sure most of us are still, I feel like eight years in, I'm still brand new to this leadership thing. I'm still learning, absorbing, growing, trying to get better. 
Uh, it'll never be perfect. But every single time I pick up a book, I learn something new. And what I got out of this chapter, this particular chapter last night when I was reading was I need to start asking myself those questions every day. And am I living up to the potential that I want to be as a leader? You know, I think it's important. So that's all I had for self-development. I'm sure you all looked at your checks. I didn't yet. So just give me, hey, unmute yourself. Who, did anybody look at their check? Are you so excited? No one? You're not excited about your check? Okay, I'm super excited about my check. <laughs> Yay! Good. Anybody else want to just scream or what? I've already been crying this whole last part, part of what you were talking about. I've been crying the whole time. <laughs> Yay! If everybody just wants to unmute themselves at once and just scream that they love their check, that's awesome that we could do that. Y'all aren't grateful enough. This is why you're not getting to where you want to go. <laughs> hey, Lisa. Yes. This is Heather Hightower. I looked at my check. I was a little surprised. Um because I went through a tragedy last week. So I'm a little surprised at what I made, but I know it can be better. So I'm gonna go with the philosophy that you and Sandy say all the time. If it's, uh, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. So I'm gonna keep growing. You will, you will, girlfriend. Anybody else like who is anybody on here have their biggest weekly check ever? Or one of? Um, I just did. That's why I was crying. <laughs> That's so amazing. <clears throat> okay, well, we've been on an hour and 20 minutes. You guys are all really awesome for hanging out with me today. Um, I love you guys. We'll talk next Tuesday. In the meantime, um, y'all, it's week to week. That's what I love about this business is we get another paycheck next Tuesday. So if you weren't happy with this one, you need to get to work. Make, make this week, especially with the double, triple, fa or the triple fast starts. I mean, this paycheck could be huge next Tuesday. It's all up to you. What you do, get out there, make it happen. You know, it is. When you, we get paid weekly, we're responsible for that. I mean, if I don't like the way my check look, well, looks, I got to get out there and work a little bit harder, sign some more people because I can grow my check just myself. And that's what I love about weekly paychecks. And that's what I love about getting paid by volume, not by people. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome thing. So, okay, everybody, I love you. What an amazing month. We're just getting started. April is going to blow y'all away. It's blowing me away already, and I'm just super excited to see where we end up at the end. I can't wait to see you guys in Phoenix and in NOLA, and um, yeah, it's, gonna, it's just going to keep getting better, y'all. Love you guys.